now that I've got my 4S Mojave, I've been trying to think of something to do with my scenting. You can see the cobwebs. She's been sitting a little too long. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail, so we can get started. Hopefully, once this project is completed, we can make it into a monster on-road drifter or turn it into an absolute off-road beast that's also really good at jumps. Anyway, here's most of the parts we're gonna use from Jenny's. I'll put links to Amazon plus all the part numbers so you can do this project yourself. Now, I actually have not figured out what shocks I'm gonna go with just yet. Then I want to get it installed and measure before I order them. That way I can dial this in perfectly. What are you doing? You eating all the bugs? That's good. Yeah, we don't want the bugs. You can have them all. Oh, and by the way, I put 50,000 weight fluid in both differentials. On one of these rear arms, I had to grind down a little bit of the pivot point because it was fitting really tightly. And after doing some measurements, these are made for an Arma 6S. Hopefully they're good, I have no idea. Fully metal, it does feel like you gotta put oil in them. We're gonna start with a 60 weight. 6S shocks are a little bit uh, sloppy on a 4 or a 3S chassis. So you might wanna get a little more creative with how you mount them. So gotta put these 17 mil hex adapters on these wheels. Then we're gonna cut, fit, and paint this body. I want it to sit up really stupidly high like a mean beast buggy. So that's exactly what we're turning it into. Oh, I'm gonna have to drive it with the stock body on there too. It looks so good. Look at that ground clearance. <laughs> Stupid bug. You may have noticed a little bit of a smoother drop there. I swapped out the shock fluid from the 60 weight to 100 weight. These shock springs are really strong. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little silly, but bear with me. It's gonna be epic. These dudes will be right after. And we are down to the last couple of days for you to be able to enter to win a brand new Rival MT-10. It will be the version two with the red and black body. Tickets are 65 cents. It's not a scam. Worldwide shipping is included. Show us what you got. Oh no! What? First? No, I didn't blow it out. It just flew off. It didn't feel like it needed to be glued, but they do. Okay, well, we'll just try this again in a minute. Now let's see what this thing's got. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Jeez. I can already see the road rash. This fresh black top is so bad. No. Well, now it looks used. Try the monster beast, yeah. the beetle beast. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, stay over there in the grass for me.
Now some gnarly stuff with these nasty creatures. Oh. Pretty much rain in the forecast all week. Whoa! Good, keep going. Yeah! Yes, finally! <laughs> yeah, we made it just in time. This thing's a monster. I love it. Oh. Horrible cogging. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We're definitely gonna do a follow-up video on this with a better motor and stuff. Even on the concrete, buttery smooth landings. Oh my goodness. <laughs> little leg lift, like a male dog. Yep, that turned out at least as good as what I was hoping for. Maybe better. I mean, it's what I wanted, it's how I had it pictured in my mind, but it actually did it on the first try, which is awesome. Now, it's not perfect, there's things I need to fix for part two, because there is definitely gonna be a part two. Now, besides the loose fitting shocks, the suspension is about as good as it can get. It absorbs bumps really well, and it absorbs jumps. I I mean, it's probably the best jumping landing vehicle that I've got. There's nothing bent or broken on the shocks. They are perfect all the way around. So, so far, I'm perfectly content with the 100 weight fluid that I use. I was happy with the way it drifts on these. And, uh, of course, you have to glue them. Now, the things that need attention, the biggest annoyance of all was the cogging. Especially in the grass. Only going from a stop, otherwise it's good. There is also a delay when trying to do front flips in the air. Certainly have to upgrade the 3S electronics to something bigger. Should I just do a 4S system or should I go above that? This will have much better performance with higher quality steering, which would be a stronger servo and a better servo saver. And these tires are just monsters. I like that they're not crazy oversized for this. That's not what I was going for. And they even drifted in that swamp of a field. That was pretty cool. The other problems that it's got that are certainly exacerbating that cog issue are that the springs rub the axles in the front. Not very hard. In fact, if you push those all the way forward, they don't rub anymore. And it didn't dig into the axle, but it's still causing friction. Of course, yeah, the extreme axle angle is gonna do that too. And in the rear, the axles rub the top of the control arm right there. And that problem may solve itself. It's already making its own groove. I expected this body to break. I fully did not expect it to survive this video. There's a few little holes in it. The roof has been etched with some asphalt. Now I know there will be 76 comments of people saying, well, you might as well buy a 4S Outcast. Nah, it feels quite a bit different. Don't forget to enter for that rival MT-10 if you're interested, link below. Oh yeah, a lot of people ask about this ramp. It's adjustable, it's relatively lightweight, and it's sturdy, especially if you get this reinforcement piece. I searched for a decent, low-cost, 
portable ramp for a long time. Came across this one and I've been using it probably four to six months. And it's awesome. Now it's still kind of pricey for a ramp, but compared to everything else that I've found out there, it's not, it's, it's very reasonable. This is the four foot wide and you can get a two or a three foot also. I absolutely love how this project turned out. Let me know what you think. 